Hey, what's up everyone? Darkwing Dad here bringing you another fun and helpful tutorial for all your 3D print and cosplay adventures. Are you working on the final stages of your 3D print and you're painting it and then you get a run or a defect in the paint? It's a mistake that sometimes happens, but it's something that's easily fixable and I'm going to show you how to do it in today's video, so come check it out. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming back guys once again this is dw darkwing dad bringing you a fun and helpful tutorial so paint runs uh they happen you know uh, something that you don't want but it's something that's fixable and i'm going to show you right now so why do paint runs happen well it's pretty straightforward most of the time the nozzle is too close to the object you're painting and you don't have a fluid enough motion now it is something that is fixable uh, it does take a very uh delicate hand it's a very uh non-rushed process if i could i guess define it that way. Before we jump into actually the process, let me give you some don'ts on what you don't want to do to try to fix a run in the paint. The first thing is just putting more and more paint on. You don't want to do that. Uh, a lot of people think that if you get a run in the helmet or whatever you're doing, that if you just put more paint on, that eventually it will go away. This is completely false. It's basically kind of like leaving a piece of dirt under a sticker and you could put as many stickers as you want on top of it, but that little dimple, that little piece of sand or dirt, whatever, is still gonna show. It's gonna get to the point to where there's just so many stickers on there, it's gonna look ridiculous. Usually what ends up happening is people put on more and more clear, more and more paint, and they don't give it enough time to cure, and that creates an even bigger problem. Do your coats normally the way you wanted to do. If you wanted to do four coats, do four coats and then move on to this process that I'm gonna show you shortly. Another thing you don't wanna do, unless you are very, very experienced, is grabbing a razor blade and scraping over it. A lot of auto body guys will take razor blades and scrape it off. It's really something that in 3D printing I don't recommend because if you don't have that exact angle, if you don't have that very steady hand to do that, you could very easily gouge your print and then you would have to start all over and start the whole process over. So razor blades, don't use them, keep them away. One big thing you do want to do though is give yourself time. So understand that you have put more paint in one area than others. So don't, 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 don't rush your work. Don't rush your process. Don't try to heat up the paint and get to it. I know when you see these defects, a lot of us get antsy and all we wanna do is fix them. Patience is key when you are painting anything. You have to, have to, have to let the paint or the clear coat, whatever it is, fully cure. Don't go grabbing hair dryers, don't go grabbing heat guns, don't go putting it in the sun and trying to get to it quicker than what you normally would. Chances are you're just gonna mess it up and make it worse and then have to start all over from the beginning. Uh, kind of swallow your pride, ignore the run, get the clear, get the paint, whatever you want on there, let it cure, let it dry, and then jump into the restoration process. So I'm gonna show you some of the defects here on the Vader Dome. They were somewhat self-induced uh, for this video. So I'm just gonna show you some of the defects in here and show you the process how to fix it all right so here hopefully you can see uh, the run that I very nicely introduced uh, into <laughs> into the paint here this is just a standard run uh, and it was a little bit larger than what I wanted to but I was using my HVLP gun and I had it in my little shelter my little paint booth um, so I put one there and here I started running out of paint. You can see how it's all hazy and there's a little bit one right there. Three little runs here and I'm just going to kind of show you uh, how to fix them, um, the best way to do it, uh, a couple different options and just explain the whole process. So basically with this process, if you haven't guessed what we are doing, we are going to be wet sanding and refining um, the paint. We wet sand, you know, we, we take a high grit sandpaper and we're going to kind of sand it down and feather it in. And then we're actually going to buff, polish and refine uh, the helmet uh, to get rid of all the little tiny scratches and sanding marks that happen when you use sandpaper. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my little setup with the sandpaper, what I use, uh, kind of where to get it, and then just kind of show you the whole process. Okay, so this is probably the most readily available uh, wet sanding sandpaper that you can get. It is in the automotive section in Walmart, and it has 1,500, 2,000, and 2,500. Obviously, we're going to need uh, some sanding uh, blocks. Um, I have these two here and I'll explain those uh, in the process as I start uh, wet sanding. 
Uh, I have some water. Don't be like me and have more water, but this is, we're just doing a small section here. So uh, you want to have some water. You want to have some sort of block that has some sort of bendiness to it. And you want to have your sandpaper. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you how to get this fixed. So I hope I have this at a good enough angle to where you can kind of see this run right here. So basically what we want to do um, to get rid of a run is what, what we're, the idea is, is to refine this down with sandpaper. Okay, so rule of thumb is you don't want to get too aggressive. If you've done this in the past before and you want to jump into something along the means of you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred, that's fine. If you're not experienced, I recommend starting at two thousand or twenty five hundred. You always want to take the least aggressive method possible. If it's not aggressive enough, we can make it more aggressive. But if we go too aggressive and we take all of this paint off, there's no way to put the paint back on unless you're starting the whole process back over. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to start and I am gonna use some two thousand grit sandpaper just to kind of show you how um, everything just starts to look when you wet sand. Using a sanding stick here, what we wanna do here is basically just spray the water on the area. And I'm gonna take my sanding stick and I'm just gonna wrap the sandpaper around it. Now I'm gonna support the helmet from the back. You can't see it, but my hand is on the inside of the helmet. And I'm basically looking for the run and I'm applying a little bit of pressure, but not a ton, but I'm really just focusing on where the run is. I don't wanna do the whole helmet I just want to do where the run is and you want to change directions kind of like that said so you will have to apply a little bit of pressure not a ton you want to just make sure that it's still sliding and moving but the idea is is to sand it down important thing with when you're doing wet sanding is just don't keep the sandpaper in one spot for too long um, you will generate heat and there is always the chance that you can burn through. So just always keep it moving and always make sure if you start to see your water run out there, you always want to keep it lubricated. So if you start running out of water, just grab a little bit more, spray it on there. So kind of work the area for, I don't know, maybe 45 seconds and then wipe it away and kind of look at what we got. we can kind of see that we've already knocked down a ton of that run. So you'll notice where it's still glossy, where it's a little bit darker. Uh, so you can see it's definitely knocked it down. Uh, definitely did what we want. It's not finished yet, but you always want to check your work. You don't want to keep going and going and going. Um, and you, you know, you're going to want to inspect it and make sure that we're not burning through any paint. Um, if you ever see any color, on your rag immediately stop. So you always wanna go through and just kind of wipe it down. If you see any color on your rag, just stop immediately um, because that means you're burning through the clear coat and taking the paint off. You're gonna have to stop and then re-clear re -clear coat that area. What we do here is just kind of hit this area a little bit more. We're just gonna work very slowly. And same thing, we're just gonna use 2000 and I'm just gonna knock this down. One very important thing is, like I said, just focus on the area. You don't have to do all the way over and down here. Um, you know, inevitably you're gonna change the direction of either your pad or your sanding stick. And actually I'll show you the pad here real quick, just so you can kind of get an idea. I really like these because, and you can use, I mean, pieces of cardboard, whatever. They just focus on just that area. The sponge works great if you are doing the whole, like if you're wet sanding the whole helmet um, or whatever you're wet sanding, but you can see it's kind of hard here too. Um, but it's the same idea. Kind of spray it on. For doing these, I'm not really crazy about using the sponge on the whole thing. What you could do is just buy one of these sponges and then just kind of cut it up into one of those sticks. So this works. It's just, it's a little bit bigger and a little bit more restrictive. I'm, I'm more restrictive because I have a bigger, bigger piece. So I'm gonna switch back to the, uh, the little sanding stick there. You'll know that you're um, pretty much close to getting this nice and refined and to the point to where it's done when it just becomes incredibly smooth. So it's very, very smooth right here. Uh, there's very little grip or bite back from the paint to the sandpaper. It's just kind of flowing right across. 
so I know that I'm very close to being complete here. If you ever feel that um, it's basically not working or you want something more aggressive, always increase hand speed and decrease the amount of pressure. That way you're just allowing the sandpaper to kind of do its thing. So I'll give you a quick example of this right here. So we still have a little remainder here of this run. So we can see that the majority of our run is gone. However, we don't want to just hit this with 2000 grit sandpaper, or at least I don't. When you sand with sandpaper like this, you're leaving very, very, very minor scratches, okay? If you are not going to buff and polish this with a machine, you'll want to go to a higher grit sand, to the highest grit sandpaper you can, and then just re-clear coat it. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna buff and polish, but what I'm gonna do by doing a higher grit sandpaper is I'm gonna make it easier on myself. Think of it just like as if you were to, um, like if you were sanding with say 120 and if you put primer over it, um, you'd see all those sanding marks. It's basically the same thing, obviously just on a different level. So what I'm gonna do real quick here is I'm just going to use some 2500 and I'm actually going to do this freehand. Um, this is just kind of like a trait that you just kind of learn over time. Um, but I'm putting a little bit, I'm putting a little sponge in between here and just kind of freehanding this. So because we've knocked down the run, all this is doing is kind of getting rid of those minor scratches that were put in by the 2000. And then I'm going to do this again with 3000. And again, this is a less aggressive sandpaper, so it's not gonna bite as much or take as much off. This is really just removing the defects that we put in there with the 2000. And it's also gonna help get rid of that run a little bit more too. You can spend more time, kind of work it in. My light's starting to die here. I'm, <laughs> I'm losing it. But you can see here that that, um, that run is gone. Luckily, I've got some natural light here. So you can see that run, you would never know that it was there. It's pretty much completely gone. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, repeat that process on 3000 grit. And I love using 3000 grit. Um, this is a Trizat uh, pad. Um, these are, again, readily available at Walmart. Everything I try to show you guys, I try to you know, get them from places where you, you don't have to order them too much online. This tries that. This is great. I mean, even if you were to just use this, you could use this the whole time beginning to end, um, getting rid of some runs. So all I'm going to do with this, same thing. I'm just going to freehand it. All this is going to do is help furthermore smooth out the paint. So any minor scratches or anything, and this is very important if you plan on clear coating it because if you put heavy scratches in there and just clear coat over it, you're gonna see all these scratches. Using a higher and higher grit sandpaper, you're basically removing them by hand and then they'll be ready for clear coat. All right, and you can see, obviously it's hazy. It's gonna look hazy because we just sanded it, but that run is completely gone. It is, it is nowhere to be found now. There's a little small one down there. Just to show you how effective 3000 grit can be, you always wanna start with the least aggressive method possible. If you're a little apprehensive about starting with, you know, 2000 or 1500 or whatever, 3000 grit tries that, a little bit of pressure. And this is kind of breaking my rules because I'm not using a sanding stick, but this has a, this has a nice foamy interface. This is on a curved surface like this, you don't want it too rigid and too straight because you know, if you've got something curved, like say you got a dome like this and you got something straight, it's gonna make contact right here and potentially burn the paint. This has a little bit of give and it's gonna more or less contour with the surface. So when you're wet sanding, look at your model. If it's something that's curved, you want something that's more squishy, that's gonna bend and move with the model. If you have something that's straight, then obviously you're gonna wanna use something like this. This does have some squish to it. I don't know if you can see. 
and obviously I've I've done this in the past, so I kind of know what to look for. These sponges are great for, I mean, these you can just put in your hand and wet sand the whole thing. These are fantastic. But when you're doing these little areas, don't get too overzealous and try to do the whole helmet. That's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to knock down a run, okay? I'm telling you, 3,000 grit try. This pad is so amazing. For wet sanding, guys, you just got to get it a little bit more right there. There's a tad bit. So you can see how... You know, this is, this is a patience game, okay? With the with the 2,000, the 2,500, and the 3,000, it was going a lot faster. But you just got to check your work a little bit more. Yeah, now it's gone. If you're not comfortable with buffing and polishing, you can clear coat this. It'll be good to go. You really won't see any of those scratches because the clear coat will just kind of fill them in. Basically, that's what I did with... Um, with Vader down here. At 3000, it looked fine. Um, basically, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you my polishing setup. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit what I'm doing and then just give you a quick demo and then wrap this video up. It's so freaking hot in here. Like, I don't know why I moved to Florida. Like, in the back of my mind, I was like, hey, this is gonna be a great idea. It sucks, it's so hot. <laughs> so now that the wet sanding aspect is done, we're gonna get into the correction or the refinement aspect of it and basically what we're going to be doing is i'm going to be using a mini polisher a three inch polisher and i'm going to be buffing polishing and refining uh the finish and this is no different than if you were basically sanding so think of a wool pad as using 180 grit sandpaper think of the polishing pad as using 220 or 320 and think of the black pad finishing pad i should say as using 400 or 600. in process just different products but what we're going to do is we're going to start with the wool pad and i like to use um geon products so this is geon compound plus and this is geon polish and we're going to use the compound on the wool pad and then the polish on the other two pads and basically what we're going to do like i said guys same idea as sanding we're going to start with something aggressive and slowly teeter up to give it that nice mirror-esque refined finish it's going to get rid of all those scratches and defects and it starts with buffing so i'm going to shake this up here kind of spread it around and then i'm going to buff this So now there is another way that you can do this without buying a $300 polisher. You know, you can get a simple attachment like this for your drill and it just screws right on the chuck. Your pad right on there and it works just the same. Uh, I have a video on wet sanding. It was pretty much the first wet sanding video I did. Um, it shows me using this. So if you wanna check that video out, um, I'll touch on it a little bit more um, when I actually do this whole dome. But like I said, it's, it's basically the same idea. The downside to this is, so this, when you engage the trigger, it'll just keep spinning. It's not gonna stop. If you're not versed or have experience with this, it's very easy to burn through paint uh, like something on an edge. Um, a polisher like this, a dual action polisher, uh, is basically free spinning. So what happens is if you put too much pressure on it, it actually starts to bog down and it wobbles, it stops spinning. So you're less likely to burn through the paint with something like this. It's really up to you. Um, you know, you don't have to get a $300 polisher like this. There are some um, cheaper polishers from some cheaper manufacturers. It's great, you can use it for all sorts of things, just for general polishing. Uh, you're gonna have a lot more control with something like this versus a drill, but the drill will work. So like I said, with the drill, same idea. I think you kind of get the concept. You go over the whole thing. Uh, like I said, watch that other wet sanding video, but I will have a video out and I'll kind of demonstrate this a little bit more. The battery is pretty low on this, so I don't really know how much more juice I'm gonna get out of it. Wipe all the compound off. Um, it's a little bit sticky. Uh, it can happen uh, with some of these compounds. Um, but when you go over it with the polish, it'll take it right off. So what I'm gonna do now is switch over to the polishing pad and I'm gonna repeat that process. I'm going to use Geon Polish, which is basically a finer, uh, smoother polish. It's gonna help get rid of some of those swirls and start the refining process on the helmet. All right, so after we buff and polish, we do the final polish. So that's with the black pad and the same Geon polish, and this is gonna leave it 
buttery smooth, get rid of all those minor defects that we put in there from the sandpaper and from the wool pad. I'm gonna leave it midnight glossy black. You can probably already tell it's starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna do this final bit of polishing and then we're gonna actually go out in the sunlight. A little bit of it, not a lot, but you'll actually be able to see a lot better out in the sunlight the difference that not just wet sanding makes, but show you how we were able to get rid of that run. So I'm gonna polish this out and then show you the end result. All right, so here, oh, I'm gonna take a seat. Uh, I'm gonna show you basically what we're left with here. So you can, and you can even see where, like look at where I wet sanded and where I didn't. So this is what wet sanding will do for your prints. And you can still see there's a faint wave of the run. I mean, dead on, you can't, you know, most people aren't gonna pick that up. Um, I wasn't super worried about getting it in the first shot because I knew I was going to have to wet sand this whole helmet, but this is what wet sanding will do for you, even if you do a cruddy paint job, which this was a rushed job because I knew I was going to do this video. So, yeah, I mean, that just is crystal clear. And again, with runs, you may have to go over it a second time. You know, I've got that one right there. So... Obviously, I'm going to knock all these defects down when I wet sand this whole helmet, but this is just giving, just showing you the process and if you have runs. And again, it's a, it's a patience game. You may not get it in the first shot. You may have to go over it. You may have to sit there and sand it, buff it, polish it, check it, and go back over it again. Um, it's a defect. It, they don't always come out in the first shot. So again, patience is key, guys, but you can really see the difference of what a non-wet sanded area. So imagine this whole helmet's gonna look like that. It's gonna look crazy. All right, guys, uh, gonna move this inside here, wrap up this video and give you my final thoughts. All right, everyone, well, that's it. That is a wrap on the little minor wet sanding tutorial. Uh, I know there's a lot of content. I'm trying to shrink these videos so there's not too much information. However, the stuff that I do it's usually jam-packed of information, so I tried to cover all the high points. Key thing with this is it really is just, it's patience and it's time, you know? You can see um, I got this dome here super, super, super smooth, super shiny, super refined. We got rid of about 95% of that run, but we just have to go back and kind of repeat that process. But I just want to give you a general idea that if you get runs in your paint, how to remedy them. Uh, like I said, wet sanding, uh, whatever grit you're comfortable with. Remember, least aggressive method possible. I will touch on more key points of wet sanding, like I said, in a more thorough video where I basically do this whole helmet. So I'll touch on a couple key points that maybe I didn't touch on in this video, just to give you guys a little bit better idea, some better visuals, things like that. I won't do it in a hot shed because this was probably the second dumbest idea next to doing the Iron Man eyes in the garage. So that will most likely be in Darth Vader part three. Uh, I'll dissect and divulge into the wet sanding, explain it a little bit more into deeper content so that way you guys can understand just a little bit better on exactly how to do that to your 3D prints and make them look awesome. But that's it for now, guys. Hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, like I said, I know a lot of content. If I missed anything, please just leave me a content. Uh, subscribers of the channel, I know you guys see me respond in a pretty quick manner. So if anything wasn't covered fully or you're not sure about products or links or anything like that, just leave me a comment, you'll know a reply back. To all my subscribers, thank you so much. The channel just continues to grow, and as it grows, we're gonna do more cool things. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that subscriber shout out. I'm gonna continue with more subscriber giveaways as the channel continues to progress. So always be on the lookout for new giveaways. It doesn't hurt to click that subscribe button and become a subscriber and become a part of the Darkwing family. Corny as that sounds, I'm going with it. That's it for now, guys. Thank you so much. Click that subscribe button if you wanna see more content like this. Leave me a comment, thumbs up, let me know what you think. I am way too sweaty, it is way too hot. I'm calling it a wrap. Until next time, DW out, later guys.